بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على محمد خاتم النبيين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقردة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم افتح فتوه العارفين اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا ذا الجلال والإكرام الحمد لله praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the right to be praised praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning and the end of our affairs praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like they gave us the muharram of this year and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they gave us the dhil hijjah of this year years, days pass by, we don't even know it these are days and pages of our lives that are turning over and once turned like Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi said can never be returned so then clever are the ones and fortunate are the ones who realize the worth of each moment and each day that passes by and by the passing of these days and these months we see ourselves and our lives diminishing inch by inch moment by moment these are the moments that we have to realize that we're walking one step closer to our ajal وَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُكُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ السَّاعَةَ وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ and when that time comes and none of you can postpone it or any bring it forward as much as you want even if you wanted no matter how much money you've got of this world otherwise the the pharaohs and the qisras and the the Qaruns and the Hamans would have been living a long, long, long time. Glad tidings for the ones who have that realization. We are almost entering, for, for those who are following Saudi and those who judge that have gone there, Dil Hijjah has already kicked in, Alhamdulillah. These are the blessed, blessed days which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in the Quran. Wal Fajr, wa layalin ashr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by Fajr, the break of dawn, the subh, the morning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by that. And then he says, walayalin ash. And he also swears by the ten days, the walayalin uh, ash. And the ten nights, if you will. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the ulama and the mufassirin have looked into what these ten mean. And the mufassirin have said it's the first ten of the month of the hijjah these are the days that we're going to be entering in, inshallah. The best days because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by these days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ أَسْتَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا وَمَنْ أَسْتَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most truthful of those who's, who's ever said anything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kalam is truth. Allah's kalam is haq. And there is no doubt even a little bit inside. When we swear oaths, we need it to give assistance and uh, almost like some dalil to our speech. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anything to give any fortification or strength to his kalam. His kalam is astab, is the most truthful of all those who speak. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's word is the most truthful and most binding and nobody has a shadow or doubt inside of it. So why does he then swear an oath by these 10 days? To show the significance, significance of the maqsum alayhi. The thing which is being sworn upon that Allah wants us to pay attention to. And these are these 10 days. These days are beautiful. No doubt these days, according to the, uh, the, some of our scholars, that these are the best days full stop of the entire year. Even better than the last 10 days of Ramadan. Although how great they are in Ramadan, how blessings are increased. These days are blessed even more. Although the ulama said that the nights of Ramadan, the last 10 of Ramadan, are better. Them nights are special. But these days are going to be, no doubt, really, really special. And why? Because there's going to be fasting that is prescri prescribed inside of these 10 months. So is Ramadan. Likewise, Sadaqah, likewise, Hajj, and all these A'mal, all coming together, is one of the reasons why Ibn Kathir, rahmatullahi alayhi wa wrote in his tafsir, that he says that these are the reason why it's one of the best ones, the best days, so fast in his days because the Prophet ﷺ said the fasting in these days, one single fast, subhanAllah, is fasting like a year. One full year, one fast, one single year. SubhanAllah. And just the Arafah, the, the ninth of this, this month, the ninth of the Hijjah, that day is called the Yawm Arafah. That day is a blessed day. 
You're in the realm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the hujjaj are going to be in the plains of Arafah asking for the forgiveness. They're going to be mimicking the way that his beloved Prophet وسلم, would raise his hands so high in the, under the naked sun, under the naked sky. And he'd be calling out to Allah, asking for forgiveness. That day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the most that he's ever forgiven in the entire year. Shaitan becomes disgraced that day. He says, all year I've been trying to get these guys to do bad sins and mess up and make mistakes and disobedience to Allah. And in one single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has wiped them slates clean. That's Yawm Arafah. What about fasting on that day? That day is even increased. Yawm Arafah, one single day, the ninth. That, yani the day before Eid, if we're going to have it. That day, the, th- the reward is going to be that you'll be forgiven your sins of the past year. And you'll be forgiven for the coming year as well. That's albeit the minor sins, no doubt. This is the fadl that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. What is, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who are we? Which days that Allah has Allah afforded us to be in? We don't even know the reality of these because we are calling these just Dil Hijjah, just another month, another day. We don't realize the worth of these blessings that Allah has given us. Because if we did, we wouldn't waste a single moment of these 10 days, a single moment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that even if you do a little that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, you enter into the airspace of Arafah, you have your sins forgiven. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ told us the gravest and greatest sin that any man can ever do, that man can ever, ever do, is stand in the plains of Arafah thinking that his sins are too great to be forgiven. That's the greatest sin because anybody who enters into, into that state, into that space is going to be forgiven. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The one who gives on the little thing, just a moment in being in that space and you're forgiven. Not only you, but the wali man istaghfara lahu al-hajj. As the last messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allahumma gfir li al-hajj, wali man istaghfara lahu al-hajj. He says, Allah, forgive the hajj, the hajjis, and the ones who they ask for forgiveness for. And they're standing in the plains asking for forgiveness for the ummah. May Allah include us into them, inshallah, not bar us because of our wretchedness and our sins. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is far greater than our sins. We, are, we, we sin and we have disobeyed. But there's no doubt that we have a Lord who forgives. That's why when the Prophet ﷺ told us about istighfar, with that dua, you say, وَلَا يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتِ Whenever you say that beautiful statement, that there is no God except you who can forgive. That statement, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, look at this slave of mine. He's, he's sinned. He's made a mistake. And then he's saying this, this statement that, oh Allah, forgive me. There's nobody else that can forgive except you, oh Allah. He says, what is with this person? Look at my servant that he thinks that he actually turned to me and he knows that there's nobody in the world, the heavens or the earth, that can forgive any sins except me. I have forgiven his sins. May Allah make us of those, inshallah. You have to have absolute conviction and, and, and absolute conviction that there's no one that can forgive except Him. And when you ask, Allah will forgive you. That's the conviction that you should have. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayki Allah. Whenever you say that, whenever you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives every single thing. Don't think that your sins are too great. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so happy when you turn to Him. By Allah, He just wants to wait. He's waiting to see when you turn to Him. Harun Rashid, everybody knows that famous uh, Bacha, the king. He was the king of his time and he was a just ruler. He was a just ruler that he would pass by this village every single time. Harun Rashid is his name. And he would walk every single, he would be on his, with his entourage on his camel, on his carriage. And he'd be going past his village every single time. And he would see farmers, he would see you know, shopkeepers, but nothing would catch his eye. Except one day that he was, walk, he was going past on his carriage and he saw an elderly man the elderly man a very aged person and he was he was almost like uh, digging a, 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 for to plant a tr- little tree a shrub that's going to grow into a huge fruit bearing tree anybody who does gardening knows that these trees take years and years and years of hard work and you know any watering and looking after and pruning and then after years and years it gives you fruit so Harun Rashid stopped he says stop 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 he says whoa whoa, whoa. He says, look at this old man here. He says, what a foolish old man he is. He says, let me call him, bring him over here. So his entourage, all, the, all his guards go and get this old man. He says, you've been summoned by the king, Harun Rashid. So Harun Rashid, pious person himself, 
He asks his old man, he says, look at, look at your age. He says, why are you wasting your time making these, these, planting this tree? Because at your age, you've only got a few years left. He says, and after that, you're never going to be able to see the fruits bearing from this tree. So why are you doing an act which is so waste of time? There's no fruits that are going to be coming from this. And he said this, so look at the jawab of this old man. He says, he says, you, you know what, Badshah Salam, you've got a point. He says, you're right. He says, but you know what, the previous ones planted, so we ate and we benefited. We plant so others after us will benefit and eat the fruits after us. So he says, subhanAllah, he says, what an old man, what a vision this old man has got. He took a bag of gold, he says, here, this is your hadiya. Instantly, he's, he's so happy, he says, what, a, what an answer that he gave me. This person must be a real special old man. So he gave him a full bag of gold. So the old man looks at him, he smiles, he says, other people's pl uh, trees, when they plant them, after so many years, they bear fruit. He goes, my tree has already given me the fruits. So the, the king said, he says, whoa, he says, this guy is really special. He says, give him another bag of gold. So he gave him two bags of gold. So he says, he says, subhanallah. He says, he says trees, he goes, usually give bear fruit once a year. My tree has given me bags of uh, any fruits twice in one year. He says, subhanallah. He says, give him another bag. And this just keeps going on and on and on until he's fulfilled and absolutely happy. But the point I'm trying to get at, is if the badshahs and the kings of this world can be happy with just a little, little act. What about the king of all kings, subhanahu wa ta'ala? You do a little act, you drop your head down on the ground, you fast a single day. If you don't do any of the 10 days, just do that night if you can. <coughs> just do that for the sake of Allah. Just one night, get up before your fajr in the time of tahajjud, before fajr, and just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dead of the night, by Allah, Allah will give you not just bags of gold, but palaces of gold and silver and ruby, uh, rubies, and be beneath which rivers will be flowing. By Allah, this is Allah. The one that gives when he gives, that he doesn't hold back. What are bags of gold of this world? When we see the, the, the beauties of Jannah, you will forget about the glamour and the glitz of this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us increase and give us tawfiq to fill these days of Dhul Hijjah, the blessed Ashur al Hurum, the blessed sacred month of Dhul Hijjah, that Allah gives us tawfiq to fill it with fasting in the days, Quran in his, and spending the nights in ibadah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from wasting any moment of this blessed month. Inshallah, this Fasl Sadis in this blessed Shamail of the Prophet, وسلم, in these moments before the Maghrib kicks in, inshallah, we're going to be mentioning the final section of the first rub. The first quarter of this book is going to be completed, inshallah. So it's going to be the khatam, inshallah, today before the hijjah, inshallah. And this is a beautiful chapter. It's going to be the names. That if I was going to tell you that I'm going to be talking to you about the items in my house, that I'm going to say that I've got this kind of a sofa, I've got this kind of a, a mug, that I, I've got a Star Wars mug, actually. Star Wars, yeah, it has to be. And I've got this kind of a carpet and I've got this kind of items at home and I've got this. After a while you'll be thinking, why is Molana going on about this? This is boring. And it's right because the items of mine are of no significance because they're just connected to me. But these items that the Musannif is mentioning here is the items of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subhanallah. They're no ordinary items. So he's going to start first of all, this kind of in khuluqihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a yusammiya silahuhu wa dawabahu wa mata'ahu From the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khuluq is the name of the internal quality or we can translate as the manners or the good character The character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from amongst them was that he would name his items So he would name his silah We spoke about that that he was weaponry. Anything that you used to use in war or you use for protection in war, that's called sila. What dawa? His riding conveyance, if you will. Wa mata'uhu, his items. It could be the items in his home, the things that he uses, the things that he, uh, the utensils, the furniture, anything could be classed as the mata'. Wa kaan ismu ra'yatihi afwan. Al-wuqab. 
So the Musannif is going to be mentioning the ver- all the things that the Prophet Sallallahu used to name. He would, and from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu like we said last time, that he would name his items. So what is it? The first thing he says, the Raya. So the standard, the flag of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was called Uqab. Uqab. Wa kanat sawda'a. Wa marratan kana yaj'aluha safara'a. Wa marratan bayda'a fiha khututun sud. So the Prophet, his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi standard was black. And, the Mus- and from the tashri of this hadith, he says that it, was, it wasn't black, but it was, it had, most of it was black or black threads. That if you look from far, you could see black. But if you came close, you'd notice that it was never a flat black. It was, it was black that it had almost like cream behind it, if you will. And sometimes that the Prophet Sallallahu had one made that was yellow. And sometimes he had one that was white. Fiha khutut So it was white, but it had lines that were of threads that were black. This was the standard of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So your flags of this world, put them aside because they'll shy away from the standards of my Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's flag. Subhanallah. Wa kana ismu khaymatihi. Look at that. Even his tent that he would have erected wherever he went on expeditions so that he would have his privacy. That was called Al-Kin. Al-Kin. وَقَضِيبِهِ And his staff would be Mamshuk. It would be called Mamshuk. وَإِسْمُ قَدَحِهِ And his uh, drinking vessel, or the jug if you will. That would be Al-Rayyan. That's the special name. Al-Rayyan. Bring Rayyan. And they would pour milk in it and they would serve the other glasses. And from the glass and they would serve the people. وَرَكْوَتِهِ and the rakwa is cast of the drinking cup, if you will. So if we look at the qad, that's going to be like a bigger bowl, if you will. Or a jug, if you will, that you'd be using to pour into the rakwa. The rakwa would be a smaller glass that they would take individually and then pass it around uh, to the right. That will be class, that will be known as sadir. Wasarjihi, the stirrup of the Prophet would be called raj. Wamiqradihi, <laughs> and the scissors of the Prophet would be called al jami where sayfi hilladhi kana yashhadu bihi al-hurub and his, his sword that he would have when he would attend battle is called dhulfiqar or dhulfaqar as we mentioned last week wa kanat lahu asyafun ukhar and the prophet sallallahu as we mentioned last time as well he had many other swords and we know the names of them wa kanat lahu min taqatun min adamin and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a belt that he would use around his izar Made from Adam, it was made of leather. فيها ثلاث حلق من فضة And he had three rings on it that he would use to tie at the front. Almost like a buckle, if you will. So he had three buckles that he would use to, to put the, you know, the ends of the uh, belt to tie up at the, in the middle. وكان اسمه جعبته His is quiver of the Prophet ﷺ was called الكافور. واسم ناقته القسوة الله أكبر his she camel was Qaswa. Allahu Akbar. Qaswa is a beautiful name. If you were to look in the Arabic um, wor- words, Qaswa is a naqatulladi quti atarfa udhuniha. Qaswa is a name of any she camel or camel that has a bit of its ear taken uh, like cut off, if you will. Wa kullu ma qata min udhun fa huwa jadun. Any animal, any um, camel that has a part of the ear taken off, you can call it jad'un as well. فَإِذَا بَلَغَ الرُّبْعَ When it has a quarter of it cut off, a quarter of its ear cut off, then it's called qaswa. فَإِذَا جَاوَزَ فَهُوَ عَدْبٌ And when it goes beyond a quarter of its ear, a bit more, it's called adba or adbun. فَإِذَا سِلَتْ فَهُوَ صَلْمٌ And when it's all of his it, ears is cut off, even one or both of them, then it's called Salmun. So these are the names. But the Prophet ﷺ, because part of his ear was taken off, he called it Qaswa. The name was Qaswa. And that's a special beast because that has a sharaf. Look at the sharaf of this, <coughs> this she camel. That it was the one that the Prophet ﷺ used at the time of Hijrah. The Prophet ﷺ rode on its back. It was a special one that would, would absolutely was really, really slow before when he came into the 
the, 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 the lot of the Prophet ﷺ at the age of four. The Prophet ﷺ bought it for 40 dirhams, if, you, if I can remember correctly, from Abu Bakr Siddiq. And from the age of four all the way till the end of the time of the Prophet ﷺ, Qaswa remains with the Prophet ﷺ. The time of Hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ says, which, which, where's my riding conveyors? Qaswa is going to be brought forward. It's going to be going. And you know the famous story when they get to Medina al-Munawwara, everybody says, come to my house, come to my house. And suddenly Qaswa starts just going into its own like navigation, if you will. And suddenly everyone's going, there. no, no, Qaswa, you got to come this way, you got to come to my house. So the Prophet ﷺ says, leave Qaswa, لِأَنَّهَا مَعْمُورَةً Because it is divinely be navigated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever it stops is where my place it is and that's where we know that's what Qaswa is Qaswa is a special special riding beast every battle you're going to see Badr you're going to see Ahad you're going to turn Fatihim Makkah all of these times Qaswa is going to be the one who's going to be in the battle wouldn't flinch other other camels or the horses when they hear loud noises you know the royal guards in the horses in, in for the queen they have to be trained so they don't when when the when the guards fire the you know, the rifles so they don't get startled they have to get they have to get trained up Qaswa doesn't need training Qaswa, Qaswa is not going to budge for anybody it was so strong that it was the only animal of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that could take the weight of wahi when wahi would come um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that we have thrust upon you a heavy word. That's the Quran, it's a heavy, heavy word. Nobody can take it. Sahabas would say if the Prophet's head was resting on the thigh, the thigh was as if he was going to crush right in the, from the weight of the wahi that was being revealed. But Qaswa, nothing can buckle it, nothing at all, not even revelation. This was Qaswa all the way. The Prophet so look at after the demise of the Prophet وسلم, Qaswa says, what use is there of living? It stops eating and it refuses to eat. And a few days later or a few a, w- a week later or three days comes a different wire that it passes away. That's Qaswa. Adba. Another name that some of the hadith when you see him, Al-Adba, they think that it's a different name. He's clearing it. He's saying, no, it's the same Qaswa. Sometimes they call it Adba. It was the same animal that they would use. وَكَانَ اسْمُ بَغْلَتِهِ دُلْ دُلْ And subhanAllah, the mule of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was dul dul. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had four uh, she-camels, if you will, camels that he would ride on. And he had, um, he had two uh, himals. So he had one baghla, which was called dul dul, the famous one. So Duldul was the mule of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the ismu himari he yafura, yafur. So the he had two donkeys of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he had as riding uh, beasts, if you will. One was Ufair, and the other one was yafur. Yafur is going to be the famous one. Yafur is a famous one. Subhanallah. At the time of uh, the Battle of Khandak, if I remember, the time of Khandak. Subhanallah, everybody was being given, um, you know, the, the war, the spoils of war. You can have this, you can have this cloth, you can have this gold, you can have this silver. One of the items comes to the Prophet ﷺ and speaks to him. And this is Ya'afur. Ya'afur was from the, it belonged to the Jews and the Jewish tribes for centuries. It was a very, very old animal. So Ya'afur comes to the Prophet ﷺ as it comes in the books of Sirah. He says, he, and it starts to speak to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, "I'm Yafur." He says, and and every prophet, sorry, prophets rode my back, but I'm the last of my kind, and you are the last of all the prophets. So take me in your lot. And he's telling the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, "Take me as your as as your riding beast." All of the you know the Bani Israel prophets, all of them one by one, Yafur was with them, and they rode Dawud alayhi salam. You're going to be seeing all these the prophets that came after. You're going to see that they rode on Yafur. Thereafter, you're going to see that it came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam because there's going to be no other prophet now that can ride on his back besides the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he stays with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the, as as his portion, and he stays. Now this was a special one because Yafur was almost like trained. That whenever the Prophet ﷺ wanted to call somebody, 
He says, go and get Abu Bakr Siddiq. Oh, there's nobody about. You say, go and call so-and-so, go and call so-and-so. And there's none of his Sahaba will be around to help him with his errand. He'll say, Ya'fur, go get Abu Bakr. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu ardahu. And Ya'fur would go and he would almost like nudge the door. He would bang into the door with his head. He would bang it from like, almost like he's knocking. And the Sahaba would all know. All of them would know by the knock that this was a knock of Ya'fur. Or oh, being summoned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Malana Uzair is being summoned by somebody else, not Ya'fur over here. <laughs> so Ya'fur would knock on the door and the Sahabi would notice. He says, I'm being summoned by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look, difference of riwayah, or rather the riwayah, the strength of the, this riwayah. The books of had, uh, had, uh, Sira are going to tell you a riwayah that as soon as the Prophet ﷺ passed away, that very same day that the Prophet ﷺ, then the Prophet ﷺ leaves this well, Ya'fur, he goes into a well. He goes into this well. As salamu He He goes to the edge of this well and folds himself into this well, and that's it. He's, he, this, is, this is where the end of Ya'fur is. The ulama are going to say that it's going to be you know, the strength of this hadith, whatever it is and stuff. Nobody actually knows and stuff. There's only this one narration. This narration, some of them that have said that it's very weak and stuff cannot be taken. But whatever it is, this was the riding beast of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he had two donkeys. One was called Ufair and the other one is going to be called Ya'fur. Ya'fur of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa ismu shatihi. And the Prophet Sallallahu goat or sheep that he had, a goat that he had, Kana yashrabu labanaha, that he would drink from yani this, this animal only, it's called Ghaitha. Ghaitha was the name. Wa min hadithin akhar, kana li Rasulillah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sayfun muhalla, qa'imatuhu min fiddah, wa na'luhu min fiddah, wa fihi hilakun min fiddah, wa kana yusamma dhal fiqar. Oh Allah. The Prophet his, his sword that was decorated, it was a decorated sword, special one. Some of them he had just plain just used, that he would use, we said. Some he had with a curve inside. Some did he have a double edge, did it double, uh, like a point on it, two that he had. And some of them, this is a Zulfiqa that he had, it was almost like embellished, it was decorated. Qa'imatuhu, his grip was made of uh, 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 silver. Wa na'lihu, his pummel of, of, the, of the, the hilt, if you will. It was made of silver, and wa fihi hilakun min fidda, and its guard was also made of silver. This was called Zulfiqar. Zulfiqar was a blessed sword of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thereafter, he gave it to Sayyidina Ali karramallahu wajha, and he had this sword. And every single battle that he went in, Allah gave him victory for it. How can he not be? His hands would have been touching the hand, the same place which the the hilt that touched the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Put your lightsabers away. This was this was the lightsaber of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa kana lehu qawsun tu sama the sadad sadad. He had a bow that he would use called the sadad sadad. Wa kana lehu kinana tu sama the jumai. He had a quiver that was called the jumai. Wa kana lehu dirun muwashahatun bin hasin tu sama that al fudul. This is a famous armor that the Prophet ﷺ had. The insides were made of copper. So he had a, like a sheet of metal on the outside or chain mail sometimes. And the insides were made of copper. They'd be stuffed with copper. It would almost be like a, a... It was almost like um, they could take the shock. They wouldn't hurt inside. The fudul it was called. Why are we mentioning these things? I mean, why are we... Subhanallah, subhanallah. We mentioned a donkey. We mentioned donkeys here. 1400 years ago, a donkey lived. 1440 years ago, yeah, right? All them years, Qaswa, we're mentioning a she camel. That's all them years ago, we're still mentioning them. Subhanallah, how has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated these things that were connected to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They connected to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we're remembering them in Blackman Sharif. 1440 years later, we're still remembering a donkey. Our teacher Habib Ali Jifri, may Allah preserve him and increase him in his knowledge and may Allah benefit from him. He said, he says, beware. 
He says, maybe dul dul, because of his connection to you being a donkey and a mule, is better than you and I. Look at the connections. That these items are better than us, no doubt, because they touch the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Zatul Fudul. We're speaking about the armor of, of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's not the armor that we're interested in, but it's who that he that this that was touching, who it touched in these beautiful moments of his life. He had a staff, a lance. He would throw. That he would throw and he, and there was almost like a spear, if you will, a lance. وَكَانَلِهُ مِجَنُّنْ يُسَمَّ ذَفْنُ ذَفْنَ And he had almost a shield, if you will. That he, that he was called الذَفْن. The Prophet says would name these items, name them, Sunnah. How many of us still haven't named our cars? وَكَانَلِهُ فَرَسٌ أَشْقَرْ يُسَمَّ Al Murtazid That's what it means. He had a red horse. Subhanallah. Al Murtajiz. That was the name of his horse. Wakan Lahu Farasun Adham. Yusama as Sakam. Famous horse of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had a black horse. Black beauty. You haven't seen black beauty. The black, the horse of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Sakam. Wakana Lahu Sarjun. Yusama Raj. The stirrup of the Prophet was called Raj. The Prophet Bagala Shahba to Samma Duldul. The Prophet um, Shahba, you can translate as white. So he's like a white shimmering. So he had white and black inside it. But the white was more than the black. It had almost like shades of black, if you will, inside it. But it was overwhelmingly white. That's why Shahba is a word that you can translate as silver. It was like gleaming silver. That's a beautiful, like, chrome effect. And look at that horse. That was called Duldun. That's the blessed one. The Baghla, the mule. وَكَانَ لَهُ نَاقَةٌ تُسَمَّ قَسْوَى That we spoke about. Qaswa was the, the she-camel. وَكَانَ لَهُ حِمَار يُسَمَّ يَعْفُور وَكَانَ لَهُ بِسَاطٌ يُسَمَّ كَزَّ he, he had a special rug that they would lay out for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahu Akbar. This Bisat, al kaz where did it go? Where did he go after the, the Prophet ﷺ? Whenever he wanted to sit, the Sahaba would have it with them. And they would roll it out and the Prophet ﷺ would sit on it. Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, Abdullah Ibn Abbas, when the Prophet ﷺ's, uh, his grave was dug, his grave was dug, they said, how can we place the body of the Prophet ﷺ on the ground? And so they said, where is the kaz? Bring it. They laid this on the floor and they put the Prophet ﷺ on there. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. وَكَانَ لَهُ عَنَزٌ تُسَمَّى نَمِرٌ He had a goat, a special goat that the Prophet ﷺ would have. That's his belongings. He was, he was called Namir. وَكَانَ لَهُ رَكْوَةٌ تُسَمَّى صادر. The Prophet ﷺ had a, a drinking cup that was called a Sadir. وَكَانَ لَهُ مِرْعَاتٌ تُسَمَّى مُدِلَّ مُدَلَّ أو مُدِلَّ Two different riwayah. The Prophet ﷺ had a miracle Mudilla. وَكَانَ لَهُ مِقْرَاضٌ the Prophet ﷺ had scissors called Jami'. The Prophet وَكَانَ لَهُ قَضِيبٌ شَوْحَةٍ يُسَمَّى مَمْشُوقٌ The Prophet ﷺ had a qadib or a, a lance that was made out of the shawhat tree. Okay, the shawhat is a, it's a type of tree is that grows in the desert, but only in the mountain parts of the deserts, if you will. So if there's anything that's on a high ground or rocks, that's the place it will grow. And the Arabs would only use the tree from the, the branches that they would almost be like sort of straight, but they would be the hardest type. So they would use it for uh, walking sticks or crutches, if you will, or support. This is the type that they would use it for. Likewise, they would use it for the, you know, what the asa that they would, the, the imams give uh, the khutbahs on. This is the tree that they would use. And the Prophet ﷺ had a qadib, a lance that, would be, that was called mamshuq. وَكَانَ لَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم رَبْعَةٌ The Prophet ﷺ had a, a, a keys or a bag. يَجْعَلُ فِيهَا الْمِرْعَاتِ وَالْمُشْتِ وَالْمِقْرَادَيْنِ وَالْسِوَاكِ And the Prophet ﷺ, what would he put inside of his bag? Was it these ten pence bags that you get? Bags for life from Tesco's and Asda. No, no, no. This is the bag of my Rasul ﷺ. He would use it whenever he would go travel or when he, whether he wasn't traveling. He had in it a mirror. 
never ever left it. He always had a mirror with him. He had a musht, which, which is a comb that the Prophet would use. See, appearance. The Prophet wants to look, you know, it's not about being vain, but to look presentable in front of people. Musht. He had two scissors inside there. And was siwak, and he had always, always, always carried his miswak. You'd have great sunnah of the Prophet May Allah give us tawfiq. وَكَانَ لَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ فَرَسٌ يُقَالَ لَهُ الْلَحِيفِ The Prophet ﷺ had a, a horse that was called Lahif. وَفَرَسٌ يُقَالَ لَهُ الْضَرِبِ ضَرِبِ The Prophet ﷺ had a horse, a ضَرِبِ The Prophet ﷺ had a faris called Lizaz. These are names of the, the horses of the Prophet ﷺ. وَكَانَ لَهُ قَصْعَةٌ يُقَالَ لَهُ الْغَرَّاءُ The Prophet ﷺ had a قَصْعَةٌ قَصْعَةٌ you translate it as a a large plate or a large bowl. How large was this? And don't forget the people used to eat together. This is norm of the of that times. And anybody who's been to Tareem, mashallah, the standard, they, they pull a, they call a sufra, they put out, and then they put the big massive plate in, and then they put the nice you know, your rice, and everybody eats together. Barakah, by Allah. You forget that sunnah of eating together, you, that love that's increasing is beautiful. And especially when you have... Um, when we, when we first went to Tareem, we had uh, some of the, you know, the Bedouins, the desert uh, Arabs. So they came and they sat down and um, me and a few Americans that were there, they were the students. So we're the Westerners. So they get rice and they have the, you know, the meat inside and you pour whatever you want. So people who have been in the desert, they don't know rice. It's the Arabs. It's, they, they don't know rice in that region. They've only just been introduced recently because of the Indonesians and Malaysians. So the way they would eat it, they would grab it in their whole hand and just fling it into their mouth and it's spilling all over the place. So it was, just like, it was like a anything that you got to get used to. But the love and the muhabba, they would take, you know, some, you know, off the bone, they would take the meat and they'll give it to you. They'll give you some, you know, the chutney that goes with it. And it, and it just increases your love and you just enjoy. After a while, that just becomes a norm. You just get on with it. It's a beautiful thing we see with the families and may Allah give us tawfiq to carry on like that. So qas'a, how big was it? It says, it says, يَحْمِلُهَا أَرْبَعَةُ رِجَالِ Four of the sahaba he needed just to carry it in the room. So look, picture the size of it and how many people can eat on that. وَكَانَ لَهُ جَارِيَةٌ تُسَمَّ الْخَدْرَ And he had one uh, slave girl, if you will. And the slave girl was called Khadra. This was the name of the thing, the slave girl of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Intaha juzul awal. This is the first rub of this book that's been finished. It's going to be we're going to be going on to a most um, beautiful section next week, inshallah. If you're going to be fasting, it's going to be making it even uh, testing. It's about the foods and drinks of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did he eat? What did he like eating? What did he not like eating? What did he um, prefer? What did he share? How did he eat? How did he sit? All of these things are going to be mentioned in the beautiful chapters that are going to be coming in the Shamail of the Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Barakul Salam. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to bless us in whatever has been said. May Allah give us tawfiq to uh, mimic the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so we can be loved by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala increase our love and our itiba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, increase our love for each other in our hearts and take away hatred and rancor and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include all of us in the du'as of the hujjaj that are standing in front of the Kaaba they're going to be going to uh, Mina they're going to be going to Muzdalifah they're going to be going to Arafah may Allah forgive them and forgive us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in our goodness may Allah forgive our shortcomings may Allah forgive our disobedience may Allah forgive our our errors, may Allah forgive our lapses in our and so al adab towards his, his kitab and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our feet firm on the path, the sirat al-mustaqim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always uh, keep, give us hearts that are merciful to everyone in, of his, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us, uh, our tongues and our actions always be of those that call and invite people to Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not that we, that we take people away from Allah is Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen